Welcome back to part 3 of this Classic F1 season series, where today we get into the second half of the European season in 2012. Can anyone take the fight to Fernando Alonso? Let's take a look. Because of some incidents back in Valencia, Kamui Kobayashi would have a grid penalty for Silverstone. And once we got to qualifying at Silverstone, we saw some awful conditions. Conditions that made the car sometimes undrivable. But nonetheless, qualifying went ahead. The big shock in Q1 was Jensen Button being knocked out, as he was still struggling in that McLaren. In Q2, there'd be another slight shock, as the Mercedes of Nico Rosberg went out. Some big names were falling early, just like his teammate Lewis Hamilton would also struggle in qualifying. Only qualifying 8th, a disappointing performance in front of his home fans. The session though would see the old Rainmaster back at it again, with Michael Schumacher qualifying in P3, showing off why he was still good at his old age. But on pole position would be Fernando Alonso, who just about beat Mark Webber in a very close and tense finish to qualifying. And at the start of the race, Fernando would just about hold on to his lead. We would though have an early retirement, being the Force India of Paul de Resta, after suffering a puncture after contact with Roman Grosjean. Again, another first lap incident for Grosjean. Despite doing so well in qualifying, Michael in the race in dry conditions was struggling, as he was only just about holding off Felipe Massa and Sebastian Vettel for P3, and soon enough he would lose that position. When it came to the races, the Mercedes was just not good enough. Despite his grid penalty, Kobayashi was looking good for points. But it all went wrong at his pit stop, as he accidentally took out some of his own pit crew. This would be the beginning of the end for Kobayashi. Pastor Maldonado was also looking good for points as well. But then when Sergio Perez tried to pass him, he took him out. In a very silly incident, leading to Maldonado getting a grid penalty for the next race. One man going along nicely though was Sebastian Vettel. After jumping Massa and Schumacher at the first round of pit stops, and was now running in a solid third. After qualifying, McLaren were hoping for something good on race day, but there was just not enough pace. As Lewis Hamilton would end up finishing 8th and Jensen Button in 10th, McLaren was starting to fall back. One team going along nicely though would be Lotus, as they quietly got their way up to P5 and P6, and that's where they ended up finishing, as again their great race pace was helping them out. But when it came to the race win between Fernando Alonso and Mark Webber, it came down to the final five laps. As because Ferrari made a mistake in terms of what tyres to be on, that allowed Mark Webber to close Fernando down. And with five laps to go, Mark Webber took the lead and went on to get his second race win around Silverstone. So Webber won from Alonso second, Vettel third, Massa fourth and Raikkonen in P5. And then Grosjean, Schumacher, Hamilton, Senna and Button would round out the points. The race though was very disappointing for Nico Rosberg, who could only manage 15th. A poor weekend for Nico. When we came to Hockenheim though, there was controversy involving Red Bull, as it came out that they were using an illegal throttle mapping system, which allowed the car to gain more downforce. And for the next race in Hungary, it would be banned. There was though plenty of gearbox penalties for this race, namely for Nico Rosberg, Mark Webber and Roman Grosjean. These penalties were now starting to affect the title fight. At Hockenheim though, we would see another wet qualifying, in again nearly undrivable conditions. In Q1 though, there was no surprises, as the usual suspects went out. But there were surprises in Q2, as first off Nico Rosberg, Roman Grosjean and Felipe Massa were knocked out in Q2, as they just struggled in the conditions. Just like Silverstone, McLaren would also struggle in the wet. Finishing only 6th and 7th, McLaren had to do more if they wanted to win the championship. The surprise of qualifying though was Nico Hülkenberg, who ended up qualifying in 5th, but because of Mark Webber's penalty would start in 4th. Again Hülkenberg showcasing his talent. Michael Schumacher would also showcase his talent by qualifying in P4, but would start P3 again because of Mark Webber's penalty. And in P2 and P3 would be the two Red Bulls but they did not have enough pace for pole. As again in the wet, Fernando Alonso was on pole position, continuing to show why he is such a great driver. And at the start of the race, he would maintain his lead, comfortably over the rest of the field. 
The start of the race though for his teammate was not good, as Felipe Massa lost his front wing right at turn 1, instantly destroying his race. Also destroying his race was Roman Grosjean, who had another first lap incident, this time at the hairpin at Hockenheim. Was he ever going to learn? And the chaos just continued, as Lewis Hamilton then picked up a puncture, dropping right to the back of the field, and would eventually retire from the German Grand Prix. Again struggling for pace on race day was Michael Schumacher, as he just could not stay in the top three, as the faster cars behind started to pass. But again doing well on race day was Kimi Raikkonen, slowly but surely climbing the field, and would eventually get into the top five. We did though have a fascinating battle for second place between Jensen Button and Sebastian Vettel. At the last round of pit stops, Jensen Button got past with a brilliant undercut. But then right at the end of the Grand Prix, Sebastian Vettel reclaimed second, but he did it illegally, passing Button off the track on the exit of the hairpin and would go on to get a penalty for that. Things just weren't going to plan for Vettel as Fernando Alonso took his third race win of 2012 in what was an awesome drive. Because of Vettel's penalty, Jensen Button would finish second with Kimi Raikkonen in third and Kamui Kobayashi in fourth, as Sebastian Vettel with that time penalty dropped down to P5. And then it was Perez P6, Schumacher P7, Weber P8, Hulkenberg P9 and Rosberg in P10. Despite losing his front wing on the first lap, Felipe Massa still did well to come back to P12. But after Lewis Hamilton's retirement, he had to start scoring points. Then we came to the final race before the summer break, the Hungarian Grand Prix. In the first round of qualifying, there was no massive surprises. But we did have a couple in Q2, with Michael Schumacher only in 17th. But the big surprise was Mark Webber in P11, as his car really should have been good at this kind of track. But he just struggled, as his teammate Sebastian Vettel was much higher up qualifying in third, and was in a very competitive position for the Grand Prix. On pole position though would be Lewis Hamilton, as he was finally responding to the last couple pole races. Could he take an important win on Sunday? Before the race even got going though, Michael Schumacher stalled, and after an extra formation lap, Lewis Hamilton would lead the field away. From Grosjean second, Jensen Button third, and Sebastian Vettel in fourth. And this race for Vettel would be very frustrating, as for much of the first stint he was stuck behind Jensen Button, and had to go a different way on strategy to get past, but because of that would end up off the podium. After what was a disappointing qualifying, Kimi Raikkonen was on it in the race, as he was showing very impressive speed midway through the Grand Prix, and this would allow him to jump his teammate at the last round of pit stops, and get into second as he now hunted down Lewis Hamilton, mostly because of the way the track is, Fernando Alonso was not doing that well, as the best he could manage was P5. The Ferrari did not like the Hungaro ring track, but Lewis Hamilton would take his first victory since Canada, and it was a very important one. Kimi was just behind in second with Grosjean on third, Vettel fourth and Alonso in fifth. Then Button, Senna, Weber, Massa and Rosberg rounded out the points, and after stalling at the start, Michael Schumacher eventually went on to retire. Going into the summer break though, this is how it looked in the driver's standings. It was Alonso still leading from Mark Webber second, Sebastian Vettel third and Lewis Hamilton now fourth. Alonso still had a clear lead. In the constructors though, Red Bull were comfortably leading. But it was very close for second between McLaren, Lotus and Ferrari. Would things remain the same after the summer break? Let's see if it did. When we came back from the summer break, we came back to Spa, one of the best racetracks in the world, and it was soon time for qualifying. And it would be a very surprising session. First off in Q1, Nico Rosberg was eliminated. Mercedes had not improved over the break, and proof of that was Michael Schumacher being knocked out in Q2. But the biggest shock was Sebastian Vettel in only P11. The Red Bull also was not getting any better. Two people that disappointed in Q3 though would be Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton, ending up only 5th and 8th, as we had big surprises up top. First off, Pastor Maldonado qualifying in P3, but started P8 because of a penalty, and also Kamui Kobayashi in P2. But on pole position was Jensen Button, 
as he was now finally starting to find his form again. The start of this race though would go down in infamy, with a massive turn one accident, all caused by Roman Grosjean, as he took out Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso and Sergio Perez, one of the biggest crashes ever seen, and this would lead to Grosjean getting a one race ban, for the next race in Italy. Thankfully, no one was hurt. And because of that massive turn one accident, that did benefit Sebastian Vettel, as he gained a few positions at the start. And because the Red Bull in terms of race pace was better than some other cars, he ended up finishing second. For a long time, Michael Schumacher was running in the podium positions. But again, the Mercedes was struggling with race pace, as drivers such as Raikkonen, Hülkenberg and Massa soon got past. After having a good qualifying, Kimi was also having quite a good race. Even though Sebastian Vettel managed to pass him, Kimi had enough pace for the podium, as during the race he completed a great overtake on Michael Schumacher at Eau Rouge. Kimi was having a great comeback season. Also having a great race though was Nico Hülkenberg, who for a long time also was going for a podium. But even though he missed out on a podium, he finished in P4, his best result to date in F1. Winning dominantly though would be Jensen Button, after keeping out of trouble and having great speed. He would win from Sebastian Vettel 2nd, Kimi Räikkönen 3rd, Nico Hülkenberg 4th and Felipe Massa in 5th. P6 was Weber, Schumacher was P7, Verne P8, Ricardo P9 and De Resta in P10. This race would see a lot of key people retiring, and it would have an effect on the title fight. But then we came to the final race of the European season, the Italian Grand Prix, and we would get again more surprises. First off, Nico Hülkenberg was eliminated in Q1, all because his engine died. The surprise knockout in Q2 though was Mark Webber, as Red Bull unsurprisingly was struggling on a power track. For the championship leader though, Fernando Alonso, it would be a disaster, as he only qualified in 10th, as he suffered damage to the rear of his car on his final lap. For once, impressing in qualifying was Paul de Resta, as amazingly he finished in 4th but started ninth because of a gearbox penalty. The best Ferrari could manage at their home race in qualifying was third, with Ferrari number two, Felipe Massa, as Lewis Hamilton went on to take pole, and it would be a McLaren 1-2. McLaren had improved so much, but at the start, Jensen Button would lose his second place to Felipe Massa, but soon enough, he got it back again. But it would not end well for Jensen, as midway through the race, he retired, with some kind of reliability problem. His title chances were now basically over. Charging through the field though would be the Ferrari of Fernando Alonso, as by the end of the first lap he was already in P5, and on the back of Sebastian Vettel. But when he tried to pass Vettel going up to the second chicane, Vettel pushed him off the track, and that would give Vettel a penalty. A controversial one to say the least, that would promote Alonso to the podium. Having an amazing race though was Sergio Perez, who after starting quite low down actually finished on the podium, and beat the two Ferraris to second. Perez was now starting to impress the top teams in the paddock. Midway through the Grand Prix though we had a big accident, for the Toro Rosso of Jean-Éric Verne, as he went off dramatically at the first chicane. Thankfully though he would be just about alright. For the first time in a while Kimi Raikkonen was not having that great of a Grand Prix, as he could not get near enough to the podium. Not good enough if he wants to win the title. This race though would end horribly for Red Bull, as with six laps to go Sebastian Vettel retired, and then very quickly after Mark Webber did too. This was Red Bull's lowest point in 2012. Winning though would be Lewis Hamilton for McLaren, as he now got closer to Fernando Alonso in the title battle. Amazingly, Sergio Perez finished in second, Fernando Alonso third, Felipe Massa fourth, and Kimi Raikkonen in fifth. Then P6 was Schumacher, P7 Rosberg, P8 De Resta, P9 Kobayashi, and P10 was Bruno Senna. This weekend for Red Bull could not have gone any worse. A double retirement when there was a chance of points, and this would affect them in both championships. In the driver's standings, Alonso now led from Lewis Hamilton second, Kimi Raikkonen third, and Sebastian Vettel in fourth. Vettel had a lot of work to do. Red Bull were now being closed down in the constructors by McLaren in P2, with Ferrari now third and Lotus down in fourth. And that completes the European season. But going into the last few remaining races, can anyone catch Fernando Alonso? 
You'll have to find out in part 4. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back on Saturday with a new episode of the podcast. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and check out my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of these races. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.